Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the Productivity 1000 series PLC program control. And the program control uh, method and instructions will allow us to specify what parts of the logic get solved and when this happens. This, is, this will control the PLC uh, scan and it will solve your logic in your program using synchronous PLC scanning. And we did have a previous post, if you want to look back, it's called Understanding the PLC Programming uh, Scan and it will explain the synchronous and asynchronous programming scanning. Now, the first thing we'll do is take a look at our software, which is our Productivity 1000 uh, or Productivity Suite programming software. And over, you'll see here on the left is our task manager. And our task manager has actually five different folders which help us organize the information within the controller. And over here on the right, we have a uh, instructions. We have program and control instructions, um, which we'll also look at. And that's also how we can control how the PLC program will scan. So this is all going to be all about how we organize our logic in our controller in order to get the functionality that we need in our applications. So if we look at uh, the actual suite, you can see that I am online. We're in stop mode right now. And if I look at my actual controller, you'll see that I'm connected to my Ethernet port, which is located right here. So this is my Productivity 1000 PLC. And the first thing we'll do is take a look at our task management. And in this window, you'll see that's always on your main screen here. And in order to get to see this, you can also go to uh, tools and then go to task management uh, panel and it will automatically bring you up to this panel that's located right on your main screen and like you said before there's five different folders the first one is run first scan only so that means as soon as you power up or go into your um, the, the program goes from program to run mode this will fire and and run the scan here or run your tasks that are within here. The next one is our run every scan. This will actually run every time um, the PLC scans. And we have uh, run every second. So these are used for um, conditions or tasks that we need to delay or we don't really care. Um, stuff like uh, an arithmetic. We don't need to do it every scan so we can actually do it um, within you know every second. And we have run when called. Now this is used back when we have our programming method here called task. Then we have a disable task. In the disable task, we, we put code or tasks in there that we do not want to run right now, but maybe in the future. So uh, it's a great place to have your uh, be organized and to develop some of your code before actually putting it into the actual program itself. So let's look at the first one here. And you can see here on our task window panel, if I hit insert new task on this icon, I can do that. And what it will do is I can get, get then enter a task name. We'll just call this test. And you'll see that test actually pops right up. And what we can do is once we highlight it under our tasks, run for scan only, I can actually then delete that. So we can add and delete quite quickly um, through here. Let's just uh, uh, minimize those, and you'll see here the first one I have under Run First Scan Only. We can double click onto the initial start setup, and it will pop up with our instruction that we have programmed. And in here, all we have is Out 1. So when I first power up this or go from Program to Run Mode, the Output 1 will actually turn on, and we'll, we'll see this on our logic. So. In order to do that, I can either power the PLC completely down, remove power from it, and then turn it back on or repower it, or I can take this switch here, I run stop switch, go into run mode. And sure enough, the first thing you'll see is that the light just came on right now. So if I were to monitor that, uh, there we go, you'll see our light on. So let's just try, just try that again. We'll just turn this off. You'll see my lights off. I'll go back into run mode. It performs my first scan 
and it, sure enough it turns it on. So that is my run first scan. Now that will not be scanned anymore. Only that one time when I first powered up. Okay, the next one is going to be run when uh, run every second. So if we look under run it when a second again, I can just double click, and up here, what I see is um, if I don't have switch one, there's my switch one, and not output two, it turns on output two. Now because we run every second. What will happen is when switch one is on, it will be on for one second, and then and when it scans the next second, it then will turn it off. So we should have an alternating um, button every time we do this. So let's turn on switch number one. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. You'll see um, that my Second output here is toggling on and off at one second interval, so it creates a flasher. Now we'll just turn that off. Now the next one we'll look at is the call. So run one called and we'll have output three. So when we, en we enter a task that has a uh, run when called, we have a task name, output three, and we now have a task in here, which we just turn on the output and then return from the called task. So that's the only thing that this uh, will actually do. So when we look at our run every scan, we look at call output three, and here we have switch number two. It will actually, um, when it turns on, it calls that output number three. And so it will then go down to my run when called, output three. It will then turn on output three and then return for where it was called, which is call output three. So let's just try that. We'll turn on switch number two which then sure enough, that's exactly what it did, was turn on output number three for us. Okay, the next one's gonna be um, my four next break, uh, which is my uh, four uh, loop break and my next instruction. Now what this will do is actually set up a a looping for us and what we'll do is just take that down a little bit so we can see it all so when I turn on switch number three it will loop and it will calculate our math result so plus one and store the result in our math result so what we'll get is a constant addition onto our math instruction and when we hit um, the end of the next it'll go and go back here and loop back to our four next loop. So it goes through this 5,000 times within that same scan. So that's the important thing, is that when I turn on switch three, it goes between my four loop and my next and executes this code here the number of times within that same scan. Unless I use a for loop break, which is located right here on switch number four. And when I do, what will happen is the it will break that scan. So as it's looping and I hit this switch four, it loop breaks out of that and, and then continues on to the rest of the scan. So what we'll do is just quickly try that. We'll turn on switch three. And remember this is, this is gonna happen very quick. And during that time, what happened was I looped 5,000 times. All right, I'm still looping every scan and my math results just went to the maximum that I could possibly have. So let's turn off switch number three now and what we'll do is just call up our data view and there is my looping here 
And what we'll do is change this uh, edit value here of 99.9. We'll just reset that back to zero again. And what we'll do is we're going to turn on switch number four this time. So switch number four is every time it goes through this loop, it will add one. Then it'll break that loop so it never gets out of that. Does the rest of the scan. Then we'll go back to the first again and start it over. So let's turn on switch number three. And what you'll see is that we slowly now are going up every scan of the PLC. It's just simply because we are breaking that loop. So the four next loop, very good to um, repeat multiple uh, rungs within the scan itself. The next one is our stop program. Now the stop program is an interesting instruction. When I switch on, in our case here, switch number eight, um, it will it'll execute this stop program. And let's try that out. Switch number eight at the bottom. And as soon as I did, as soon as I turned that on, what you noticed was that um, it executes stop program. I immediately go into my stop here. And if I try to run it, it quickly goes into run and back out because my condition is still on. So it only goes through the first scan. So let's just turn that condition off again. And now if I go back into run, I can go here or I can use my switch as we did before. So let's hit the run up here. You sure you want to do this? Yes. There we go. So we're back into our run. So the next instruction is our user define fault. And here it is here. And I'll just make this a little bit smaller so you can see the entire gamut. And if I look at the actual instruction, what this allows me to do is to create eight different variables on tags and look for conditions within that tag with other variables or actual numbers. And when they meet, I can then create a found um, error number here. And I can either stop the program or just have that error code. We'll hit OK. And what we have in our case here is a battery level. And we look for it greater than 40, which will never be. Because currently right now my value is uh, 30 or 3 volts, 3.0 volts. And it should be, uh, we're looking for 4.0. So we want to create that error. And then switch number 6 will reset. So let's uh, take a look at that. And what we'll do is turn on uh, switch number five. And when switch number five turns on, once again, you see that my uh, controller is now stopped. So let's clear that fault. Okay. We'll use the toggle switch this time. Turn it off. And we'll turn it on again. So my PLC scan is now running again. And this time here, we'll turn on switch number six first. So you see I'm resetting that within that same scan. I'll turn on switch number five and you'll notice that it does not stop the CPU anymore. That is because I'm resetting it within that same scan. If I were to turn off switch number six to do the reset, once again it goes to my stop mode and stops the execution. So you can see the different ways in which we can uh, manipulate this whole control. Now, if we look at back at our task management, you can see that I have several windows that I've opened up here. We can go to window and we can cascade these so we can see all the different little programs that we have. Or we can um, use window, we can um, tile them vertically or horizontally. Uh, we can switch from next window, previous window, um, several different methods in which to do that. We can also go to, on the task management, we can actually manipulate the order in which they're going to execute. So in this case here, when it first starts up, we use our initial startup. Then we go into our run every scan. Then we will go to our run every second. 
and then we go to a run when called when any one of these programs have it so that we call. Now within here, if I want my user to find fault up to be the first one run, I can move this up, click and hold it, and move it right to the very top. So I can manipulate where these um, programs are going to be. If I, my initial startup, if I don't want it under the run there, I can put it just down here on the disable test. Click and hold it, drag it down, and it now appears on a disabled task. So I can manipulate very quickly on my task management exactly where everything is going to be. And then what I'll have to do is then transfer that program um, to the uh, actual PLC when I have my tasks all orientated. Let's just move that back up to the run first scan. Um, and then once you have everything set, you can then do your transfer. So I haven't changed anything, so that's why the transfer didn't prompt me to do anything else. So all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. It gives a thumbs up so other people can find this information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.